Welcome to Bobby Fischer Saga. This is the shortest game ever between Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky and you can call it the shortest game of the century. Why this so? You gonna see in the match. This match lasted only 21 moves and 2 world champion and 21 moves. Pretty crazy things. Talking about this tournament, this is the game 9 from 1992 unofficial world championship and this was so called by Bobby Fischer so no doubt about that that this is the world championship and the money prize we have 3.5 million dollars for the winners and we have 1.5 million dollars for the losers so obviously this was pretty huge amount at that time so without further ado let's dive straight into the game Bob Fisher with the white pieces opened the game with e4 Bob Fisher pointed this out that e4 brings a lot of advantage to white so let's see how Boris Spassky deals with that we have e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 we have the royal opus on the board a6 the morphe defense we have captures captures and now white just castle this is the Gligarich variation of the Royal Opus. So f6, quite a good move because you have to protect the spawn. And there is no good way to defend it. So we have d4 striking in the center. And after captures, captures, we have c5 dislodging this knight from here. So the queen can be traded. And we have some trade happening here. And this bishop is now jumping with an attack on this rook so we have f3 bishop e6 knight c3 bishop d6 quite development taking place here now b6 here protecting this pawn because this was attacked twice now a4 striking with this move saying okay now i am going to play this a5 and now this pawn is going to fall here Boris Spassky made a very interesting decision and castled the queen side. This is very risky because you know Boy Fisher is the chess engine and obviously he can bring the best move in every position. So castling the queen side is really risky. So we have a5 going for a straight away with this pawn push. Now this king is jumping into the game. We have the strongest move recommended by the engine and we have reached the critical position. Here this position, here finding this e5 is really important. Let's see why this is important. Can you capture this pawn? Obviously not. After we have captures, I will have to remove the defender this knight and after captures I will have to go for the capture then after this move you get this position where three pawns are just isolated and if Bob Fisher plays this this is completely winning and these pawns will eventually fall after few moves so obviously this cannot be played you cannot capture it there is another line after this you can try up to capture with this pawn saying okay these three pawns are connecting and there's no doubt so this knight is now jumping on e4 square with an with an double attack on this bishop and if we try to save it by this way because this king cannot move this pawn would definitely hang so if we try to save it then definitely this is the last position you can pause the video to try and find the fantastic move for Bobby Fisher here Bobby Fisher can just sacrifice this knight and you see the problem. After this is check so you will have to accept the sacrifice and after you accept it there is this rook captures then bishop captures and you win back your piece. And after you play this this is completely winning. These two pawns are isolated and this pawn is going to fall in the next move and obviously this pawn is falling so completely busted position for black so this was another way to play this so realizing all the fact Boris Spassky 
did not go for that and brought this bishop back. Nevertheless, we have captures, captures, and this now knight is jumping on e4 square. So saying this, again the threat is to capture this pawn. And if you go for the capture, this pawn captures again the same theory will work, fucking this bishop and the king. So Boris Spassky says, okay, this move will not work now. My king is in the center, but is protecting everything. But is that so? Let's see. We have first capture with the pawn. And after captures, again, the stunning move, you can pause the video to try. We have this knight captures on c5. Let's see where this problem. If you try to accept the sacrifice, then again, this check and you are losing this bishop. You will have to play this. Otherwise, if you go here, then again, this knight captures comes with an attack on the king. So you will have to move it. And if you move it, again, this is the last position. These two pawns can easily win the game for white and there is no doubt about that so after this stunning move this bishop is now getting back and now we have another pawn, pawn captures and so all the pawns are just falling we have captures in the center so Bobby Fisher delivered a check here and even in this position after playing this King to c7, Boris Spassky just resigned the game. So why you resign is really interesting to watch because you're going to get this check and if you try to move inside, surprisingly you have this stunning checkmate because this rook is protected by this knight and knight is delivering a check. So obviously you cannot play that. One more thing you can try with this bishop but this is simply nothing you can just pause the video to try you can just sacrifice this rook and after this king captures it can deliver this check and now this rook is lost and completely winning position for white these two connected past pawns and this pawn is just falling in few moves so there is no playing this Boris Spassky realizing all the fact resigned the game on move 21 and what a great victory for Bobby Fischer. So you would have noted that why this is the shortest game of the century, how this e5 move was really brilliant and how the knight sacrificed worked really well for the world champion Bobby Fischer. Talking about the other games, I will cover all remaining games. So till then, you can consider subscribing this channel and I'll see you soon in my next video covering the Bobby Saga.